Hey, so I just want to make a tutorial about the Ignis Pixel utility. You can download this from Ignis Pixel's website for free, and it is meant for use with their Pixel Poi products, as shown right here in this drag down. So, um, I don't think that there are really tutorials out there, or at least I didn't see any, but I really could use one when I first used it. this, and um, yeah, it's a great program and everything, but I just wanted to kind of put a little bit of guidance out there, at least in the way that I use it. So. Right now what we're looking at is the blank project screen. A project is just what each file is called. You got your basic everything's here and there. And um, basically just the nitty gritty is you just want to add image and uh, maybe music, which I'll also talk about. Um, you don't. You can go through here and then you can explore through your files all the things that you want to pick out and then just throw them in and whatnot. But um, really what I do is I just drag and drop into here. So. Let's say, oops, let's say I bring this guy in and um, I want to pull out an abstract. Oh, here's a good one. This is, I made these in Photoshop, but um, I just pull that right in there and then boom, you got a pattern that can be shown on your uh, pixel uh, props. And this is a really nice preview in that way. So what we're looking at here is on the 256 and I just use that because it's really nice and easy. And when I use my pixels as chucks, which bring them in closer here, um, this is a little bit more what it looks like. So um, what we got here is the twirling direction left or right. So you can see this would be pretty helpful if uh, you're doing uh, text. And um, you know if you, at whatever point in your performance, have to spin it one way or another way for the text obviously to be read, maybe you might want to flip it so it's readable. Um, or you have to change which way you do it. You also have flip vertical, and then you also have flip horizontal. All right, um, pretty cool ones, and yeah, you can you know combine them and whatnot, and that's pretty nice. So um, here we got our brightness. Usually we're at 100 percent, but what I found lately is like when I record on a cell phone camera, it's kind of nice to turn that brightness down because the light doesn't bleed as much. So that's where it comes in handy. Um, I haven't really played with the enhanced colors. I don't really see any difference here, but maybe on something with a little bit more color variety, you might notice it. Then uh, we got stretching here, which is it kind of lowers or heightens the amount of repetitions of that pattern before you complete a uh, circle. And I know that Ignis does uh, certain ones where you know the pattern will always stay, like this part always stays on top no matter how you're spinning it. I'm not sure if my uh, Pixel toys have those right now, but um, I know they make some. So maybe this really does uh, make it nice and. You know, there may be too much going on here, but it might look a little nice around there or there, you know, when you do that. Get a little Sharingan action. Um, Naruto reference, I'm sorry. So, um, now, what we're going looking at here, we have our little music row here, and I'll talk about that in a, in a bit. So, if you know how to navigate your pixel props, you uh, can, at least on mine, have like nine programs. So, this is T1, T2, T3. Don't really need to remember those, but I usually just mess up, mess around in this uh, first one. Maybe I'll keep two or three more programs on my check. So let me throw just a couple more patterns on here. Um, there's that. Bam. I just, uh, not all of these are great uh, folders for everything, but, you know, I made a couple of these things and I like to just kind of document them a little bit. Little things I'm just grabbing random things right now and these are all seamless textures things that repeat very seamlessly so you know things like brick patterns or you know simple patterns like that you can also go online and just search up seamless texture um, that you know can really help you with a lot of stuff but I also made a lot of my own uh, not these two uh, on Photoshop so there's some really cool one you can play with let's do one more yeah, it's not very watery let's do fire all right, so this is out of the way, and then you can preview all of these. I like that one a lot. I played around with that a lot. And this one kind of looks like, you know, traffic sign stuff. Do, 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 do. So pretty cool. And then, again, you can, oops, you can do things as you want to. So pretty nice. So um, let's say I just want to make one program on my checks, or on my <laughs> pixel props. Sorry, I'm a nunchuck guy. I can throw this in here. And then I can just drag this out. And then if you notice, we have a little uh, timestamp al on, along uh, five-second increments here. So let's say I want this to show for 10 seconds. 
And then I can just pull down the other one right there. And let's say I want that also to show for 10 seconds. Let's say I get here and you know what? I don't want to show as long because it's too simple of a pattern or something. Let's do five seconds. I bring this guy and let's say I am, I just love this one. I just bring it here for like 25 seconds. So that's kind of the idea. Um, now when you, oh, hitting play here does nothing until we get music in, but you won't be able to see or preview in the program it changing into each of these. But sometimes in, when we get the music going here in a bit, um, it'll be going and what I like to do is like, you know, make, keep my eyes on the timeline and then click, 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 go through and whatnot. But let's just say we go here, let's just set these all to five second increments. But let's also say you want to, um, you know, do something less than five seconds or you want to do something even less than a second, like quick flashies. Um, you know, you can't see very well. Like if I want, you know, maybe a half second, I can do that. If I want a quarter, I'm getting a little dangerous there. So what I like to do is I press control and I use the scrolling wheel on my mouse and now I can zoom in. It's a lot like what you can do on a web page to zoom in or out really quickly. So I go here and now I can see all those little milliseconds and it looks like that's about the best resolution I can get it there, whatever these are. But yeah, like five millisecond increments here. So pretty nice there. So um, yeah, let's pull it back out to about five view and whoa, oh, there we go. That was me scrolling down. So let's just set everything here-ish for now. Oops. And you can also adjust the order of things too. So that's also a nice little one. Um, but yeah, one important note is here I am at this yellow one. If I change this guy to now be the third guy in this gallery here, it's going, oops, ah, it's going to change what that guy was and this guy does it too. So be very careful when you do that. I usually like to upload these in the order of like um, how I want them to show up in a performance. I might bring them up again later. And that's cool too, but once I, uh, you know, mess around with these, when they're all laid out over here, it kind of gets a little messy. So really think about your order when you're putting these up, like what you want to start, what you want to end with. And if it's a little jumbly in the middle, but as long as you don't, you know, shift them around often, you should be fine. So that's just one thing to watch out for. Um, but yeah, so, oh, and then how to horizontally uh, scroll is you just grab the timeline itself and then go. So um, here I am. Just doing a little surgery on here. And, you know, in some performances, it won't be just five seconds, but um, we'll figure it out when we get the music up here, which is what I'm about to do. So, there's that, that. Let's not care about the time on these guys. So, let's talk music. So, what I'm going to do is, um, let me minimize this so you guys can see. I just have a song, a little kind of synth wave uh, that. I just have in a file that's just an mp3 so I'm gonna move this off the desktop real quick bring this guy up here I drag that from my desktop or from wherever you have it the file itself um, I don't know if you can pull it straight from iTunes or anything but I'm just gonna throw it right here in the music area and this is where it's pretty nice so um, let's zoom in on it a little bit you can see all those little kind of sound waves and this is a pretty consistent song other songs might be a little more bit more obvious and I usually like to use those when I do a performance but this is kind of nice. So I'm sorry if the music blares, I won't play it too long, but just to kind of show you an idea of what this is going to be like, I'm going to hit play. And when you do it yourself, make sure your speakers are pretty down because it does this at, uh, you know, full sound for that song. So I hit play. <laughs> And let's say I'm going to hit play again. If I hit pause, it's going to keep it right there. And I can hit play and it'll keep going. All right, if I hit stop, it'll reset it to the beginning of the timeline. So that's a good way to, uh, to know how to use it. All right, now let's say, now I can start, you know, really kind of adjusting what I want to do with these pictures. Let's say I want to listen to about like, you know, four measures in. So sorry, you're going to have to hear all this synth wave today. <laughs> Right about there let's put it right here about bam all right and then let's say you know these other guys go too but this is gonna make it so basically we're I'm gonna put you through it again we're just gonna see just this pattern and again it won't preview it for you so I like to keep my eye on the timeline and click on that pattern then hit to the next thing when it uh, starts to cross that line there so we're here at stop I hit play Look at this. 
So it kind of also helps to, you know, add as you go. I don't know what happens if I overlay. Oh, wow. Okay, so I guess that's what happens there if you do this. If you start to skip over an image, is I guess it drags, is, it drags it up. I actually never really, whoa, saw about that one at the time. But let's delete this guy out and see what happened there. So they totally got rid of this guy in there, I believe. You know, if I, okay, so that is one thing to watch out for. So if you drag completely over an image, um, it seems as if it does get rid of it, which is a little unfortunate, but not really the end of the world. You can always throw it back in there, but, oh, never mind. I lied. So um, I guess if you drag it out from the end, then you're probably looking at it there. So I'm here. So this is why I prefer, hey, there you are. This is why I prefer to just add them as I go. So I'm here. Right about there was when it started changing. And then, you know, again, I just throw in the next one. So I'm just doing it by four measures, which is a pretty easy thing. But if you have a song with a little bit more variety, you know, something with a little like do, 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 maybe you want to flash a couple images there. And um, just my personal advice, I like using this arrow for a, for an example, and then do a couple different um, color palettes of it. So when it gets to a flashy, it goes, you know, red, blue, green, white, and then onto the, whatever the next pattern is. So that's just kind of what we're looking at here. Um, if you don't want to start your song from the start, unfortunately, there's not really a lot you can do about that. I can't move it forward or back here. So I recommend just taking your sound file over into a song crop machine online and then just you know choosing where you want to start and finish um, i usually like to give myself a little buffer here where i'm really not even doing anything so i can hit the button on my uh, pixels at that right moment so um we will also talk about uploading onto your um onto your pixel toys so You'll plug your Pixel Toys in using the uh, cables provided that they gave you, or it's really just a micro USB to a USB type A. And you'll just plug that into your computer or those in your computer. I like to do them both at the same time. And um, from there, you'll hit scan. All right, It's not going to find anything because I don't have mine plugged in right now. But you'll do that, hit scan, and you let's say I plugged in two of mine. Mine should say uh, you know, Pixel 48 Lite, Pixel 48 Lite, two showings of it. Um, and then what I'm going to do, I don't have to worry about this being on 256. This is just for previewing purposes. Oh, this is what happens if I put on the 48 light. It gets way too out there. So when I'm spinning nunchucks, it doesn't really look like this. It looks a little bit more like that. So I just keep it there personally. All right. So I go to devices. I'm going to hit upload. Oh, very important. We're going to want to check what we want to upload. So if I made a couple of these, if I made, you know, that guy and that guy. Sometimes it's a little weird. You know, let's just say these are bigger, prettier programs. Let's say I do this and this and that. Then when I do upload them, I can go select them on my pixel thing. It's just going to be when the dots at number one, dots at number two, dots at number three, when you're navigating your pixels menu. Um, if I don't want to include one, I'll just take that guy out. Um, when you look at your pixels, it's not going to be at number two. It's just going to be at one and three. All right. When you pull it up on two, it looks like mine. They just show a pale blue light. So anyways... So you scan, you find them. Sometimes you'll have a little bit of issue here. Sometimes it's got a close program, so make sure you save often. Um, and you can go to devices, you can hit upload, and I just always hit upload all. And um, although, you know, that's with the checked, you can say upload checked. Um, and then I'm assuming current, I've never used current, but my guess is it just, uh, you know, I'm not going to tell you what I guess is because I don't want to, you know, <laughs> hurt anybody. Um, but you can also just hit this and it's way faster too. scan, make sure they're there, that they're both showing. And it's not trying to search for another hit upload all. All right. When you save, um, it'll save just like anything else. But if I were to close this, uh, let's say 
Yes. I'll save it to my desktop. This one or something. All right, and then I pull this back up. Uh, so there's one right there. It pulls this up, but it didn't pull up the number one that I saved. It just pulls up what it last remembered. So this is an entirely different project. So any changes I make to this do not go to one if I just hit save, unless I save it as one and replace the file. So it's a good thing to watch over for. Um, and that's just kind of the basics of using it. I've never really looked over here on all that other stuff, but really that's just the nitty gritty of getting in there. Um, I recommend, you know, really zooming in on your timeline if you want to nail beats and then, you know, get your uh, pictures synced to it. See, it looks like I was a little off on, you know, when the music actually changes tone. So I might just want to throw somewhere in there. And you can really just get it in there nice. Um, but yeah, and I just like doing the previews a lot. Sometimes I pull it up just to look at pictures like this. Uh, it's just kind of fun sometimes to go around and play with them and you know see what happens that's pretty cool see this is why i do this all right and then um you know play with other things so pretty cool stuff i hope this was helpful and um i hope you know this yeah i hope this is definitely helpful because i could really use this back then so have fun with your pixel props